And that looks good. Man. Hey everyone, welcome to Break It Yourself. Today, we're gonna be remaking our three-in-one plyo box. And the goal here is to make a plyo box and a design that you can just take the cut sheet that I give you into Home Depot, get yourself a three quarter inch sheet of plywood, go back to the saw, hand the cut sheet to the person and say, this is what I need. And then you'll have all the pieces and you can go home and just screw the box together. So you'll need a drill. You're gonna need some wood glue. You're gonna need two inch screws. Of course, the three quarter inch sheet of plywood. And then if you wanna add handles, you're gonna need at a minimum a jigsaw. And then to make life a lot easier on yourself, I would also suggest a hole saw, maybe one and a quarter inch or one and a half inch hole saw. And that should be enough to get you going. Now the other goal in this design, other than just making it very easy and you not needing tools, was that I wanted to make it stronger. So I got a lot of comments last time saying, hey, you should have used wood glue. I absolutely should have used wood glue. But you may ask, why not just do version one with wood glue? Now that would be great and it probably will be fine. But let's go look at version one and I'm gonna explain a little bit about version one and then I'm gonna explain the difference in version two. And if you don't care about the differences and you just want to know how to make the box, you can go ahead and jump to this timestamp and I'll show you exactly how to make everything. I wanted to make one major change and that change has to do with how this top right here is supported. If you notice this side right here, if we turn the box, when you're jumping on the 20 inch side, all four sides of this are supported by wood. So this overlaps this side and this overlaps this side all the way around. So it's very sturdy to jump onto this. There also is a center support as well supporting it. And then if you turn it up to the 30 inch side, you'll see that this 30 inch side is supported on two sides. So you've got this piece of wood underneath. So this is overlapping this piece of wood. And then on this side, it's supported just by the screws. So this is okay. But the issue comes when you go to the 24 inch side. So when you have the 24 inch side, you'll notice that this piece does not overlap any wood. So the screws are going in. And so the only thing holding this side up is screws, which really is not the end of the world. I just wanted to approve upon the design. There is a center support here that is supporting the middle, but then all four sides are screw supported. So that's what I set out to fix in my version two. So you'll notice on the new design that every side of the box is supported by two sides. So this side, it overlaps this side right here and this side right here and is screw supported by this side and this side down here. This side overlaps this piece of wood on top and the piece of wood on the bottom, but is screw supported on this end and this end. And then lastly, our 24 inch side that we had the issue with the first time, you'll notice it is overlapping with this side here and this side here and it's screw supported on this side and that side. So every side is now supported by another piece of wood on two sides and then screw supported on the others. We also have supports in the middle, which we'll show you. And I used glue this time as well. Now that you know the difference in version one and version two, you're gonna take your cut sheet, you're gonna go to Home Depot and you're gonna get your cuts made. I've numbered the cut sheets suggesting which cuts to do first, second, third, and all of that. And then the one thing is you're gonna get three main scraps from doing it this way. And those three scraps can be used in really an infinite number of ways to be the middle support for this. I'm gonna show you in my cut sheet the way that I decided to do it. But really, if you've got a better idea, of course, you can do it that way as well. Let's talk about this cut sheet just for a second. So I put this together for you and I labeled everything that I could think of to hopefully let you accomplish this with a four by eight sheet of plywood. So the blue squares are your 28.5 by 24 inch side. So you have two of those and the purple being 22.5 by 20 and then the green 30 by 18.5 and then the red, which I'll get into a little bit later, those are your brace pieces. That's how I'm doing it. You have 
a massive scrap at the top here that you could make braces out of. You've got this little scrap at the bottom here that you could also make it out of. I've labeled your first three cuts because I think they're the most important ones. So number one here, I want you to go or have the person at Home Depot or you with a circular saw or a table saw. You're gonna go ahead and cut this. You're gonna pull your tape from the end of the plywood, 28.5, mark it and cut. You can get, then go ahead and cut that piece in half doesn't matter to me. Now, one thing to point out about, I'm, I'm kind of lying when I say that this, these blue pieces are 28.5 by 24, because technically the four by eight sheet of plywood, it's only four feet wide on this side right here. If you cut that in half, uh, the thickness of the blade, it's also called the kerf, is usually an eighth of an inch. So that blade is gonna remove an eighth of an inch of material when you cut this blue section in half right here. Now that's no big deal because in reality, what you're gonna end up with are two pieces, if you cut it right down the middle, that are 28.5 by 23 and 15 sixteenths. To me, <laughs> that doesn't matter at all. I don't care that I lost a sixteenth of an inch. I would rather save money, use one piece of plywood instead of really caring about that 16th of an inch. So just keep that in mind, it's just for the blue ones. Okay, so you're gonna make your first cut, you're gonna lop off the blue portion, then you're gonna move down another 20 inches, and you're gonna cut off the purple portion. Then I would rotate the pieces, and then I'll do your third cut straight across there. You're gonna have this scrap left over, and then I would make, I would take this piece right here, so just this piece exists now, right? Because you already did one, you already did two, and then, you did three right here. So this is your piece. I'd come back, I'd cut it right here, and then that would leave you with one piece that's 30 by 18.5. I'd make your second cut right here. And then the reason I only dimensioned the braces in one direction is because I'm not 100% sure what this width is gonna be of this scrap. You're gonna be left with this little scrap right here. And all that matters is that the height of those is 22.5, and then I would rip that piece right in half. It will roughly be about eight inches, it seems. Whatever's left, this scrap right here, just go ahead, cut it here to 22.5, and then rip that piece in half so you have two braces, and that's really it. But just keep in mind, I would not, if you're cutting this on your own, I would not mark your first cut and your second cut. I would not do that. I would, I would mark your first cut make the cut, then pull your tape again. Because every time you use the saw, depending on your blade, you are definitely at least removing some wood, most likely an eighth of an inch. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna put this uh, cut sheet up on the screen. You can screenshot it that way and bring it to your big box store. I'm also gonna try to export this to PDF and then have a Google Doc link down below in the description so you could also get a better resolution one if you wanted to print it as well. All right, this is take two. <laughs> I messed up the first one. But at this point, we should have our six pieces to start that we got cut at Home Depot. We are going to glue and screw them together and uh, then we're gonna go from there. So let's get started. Make sure you measure. I messed up last time, so I'll show you what I did and then what I'm doing different this time. So for this first piece, I'm gonna pre-drill my holes before the glue, put the glue on, line it back up, and then put the screws in. Also making sure that we are gonna have overlap here, some plywood overlapping on each side. So I'm using this scrap to check my measurement here. I'm gonna pre-drill. Just enough to get me started here. The other thing to check is to make sure our dimensions are right. So, for instance, this box in this direction is 20 inches, and in this direction, this piece right here is 18, or I'm sorry, 22 and a half. So if I add three quarter inch plywood on this side and this side, it should add up to 24, which that's 23 and a quarter, so that will be 24. So we are finally doing the right thing. So I'm gonna glue right here, put it back together. So 
again, I'm gonna pre-drill some holes prior to gluing it up using my scrap as a spacer. We're gonna go ahead and put this top piece on. The bottom piece is just resting in place. So we're gonna glue along these two long sides here. Put that top piece on. I say top piece, the largest piece. There's two of them. So go ahead and get our glue going. We're also gonna have to have glue along here. So you need to put glue on the piece itself or directly on here. Probably would be better to put it on the piece. Put glue across here. Do a good bit of drilling, good bit of screwing. So I'm gonna put this side in first and then we'll come back down the sides. So just kind of check how it folds. There we go. Now we're gonna work down one side here and then we'll go back down that side. Now, if this board is warped, just pull the end out until you get it flush. Put one in and then keep working the board back in until it's nice and flush. So in this instance, if I have it flush here, it goes in right here. So I'm gonna pull this out until it's flush right here. Go ahead, drill. Put a screw in there. Keep working my way down. Same thing, this wants to kick out now. So push it in until it's flush here, work our way down. Can even put one in the end here to hold it. I'm not gonna put this bottom big piece on yet. I'm gonna put this end on first. We are very close. Okay. So we're gonna put glue on the ends of this guy and along here. I'm actually gonna put one here to help hold this up, help support it. We are close. At this point, if you have the big box store, cut all this wood for you, you'll be left with three scraps. One, two, and three. And that's what you have left over to make the brace on the inside. Now the downside of making your box this way is that you don't just have one clean sheet like on my old box to just make the center support. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do and we'll see if the big box store could actually make that cut for you. I'm not 100% sure. But with these three scraps, there's an infinite number of ways to brace the box. I'm gonna go with what would be strong but also very light. So I'm gonna use um, this medium size scrap right here. I'm gonna cut it to the same length as this guy, so this is 22 and a half inches that I'm gonna cut it to, and then I'm just gonna rip it in half, and you'll, you'll see what I do with that there. So what we just cut, or two braces, hopefully you can see this, that will fit in here. And so we'll put one essentially right here, and this will support this piece that lays here, and then one will go all the way at the bottom against the other piece. That will be plenty strong enough to support this side, as well as support this side like this. So we're gonna glue it on the ends, we're gonna glue it along here, and we're also gonna screw it in It'll be very strong. This is also a lighter way to do it since you're not using a whole sheet of plywood in the center here. So we can just slide this down and I'll show you. Hopefully you can see inside here, okay. Essentially that's what we're going for. One will go here, one goes down there, 
and that's plenty good bracing. And that's it. So one thing that will help is if you measure, that way you know where to put the screws. So this is 28 and a half. So we'll go 14 and a quarter is the center. That thing is now in there. It's the last panel that we're gonna put on. It's gonna be a lot of glue. So we're gonna glue all along here, all along here, across here. I suspect it's gonna be hard to get this panel in. It's gonna take a lot of finagling. Just because this thing was cut at Home Depot, it's not perfect, it's not perfectly square. All the measurements are not exact. So this last piece could be, you know, could take some hammering. So let's gonna, we're gonna dry fit it first, just to see how it does. <laughs> yeah, all right, it's close, it's very close. Okay, so now we glue. Lots and lots of glue. At least we know it fits. Yeah, you're gonna definitely need the hammer. Okay, so on a corner that we know is good or is close, we're gonna start drilling there. I know that this side is pretty good, the way that it's lining up. So I'm gonna put a screw here, screw here, and come across, and then I'm gonna work on that end. All right, now we're gonna go across here. All right, we've got some work to do. And that looks good, man. I'm gonna start at this corner. Get it locked down. I'm gonna come across here now. This looks good. I mean, it's still pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. I'm relatively happy. All right, don't forget, we got a brace right here. Let's go ahead and find that guy. Should be 15, it's halfway. So 15 inches, I'm just gonna put three. One roughly in the middle. All right, last thing to do is handles. Now you can put your handles anywhere. I'm gonna put them on this side because this is the side I normally jump up onto. This is the 24 inch height right here. So I'm used to grabbing right here. So I'm gonna put my handles here and here. Just kind of arbitrarily picking. So this is the 30 inch side right here where our handles will go. Just make sure that you don't put one on like this side and then on the opposite side, it's on this side. Make sure they're both on the same side. Okay, you are gonna need a jigsaw for this and I use a hole saw because that just makes life simpler. 
This is a, looks like one and a quarter inch hole saw. You can use whatever size you want to. I'm just gonna kind of arbitrarily be picking here. So I'm gonna measure down to where I think. So I'm gonna say, you know, four inches down, something like that. And then get it centered here. So 10 inches is the center. So let's come out, you know, let's say three inches. We go seven, 13. We'll use our hole saws and then we'll connect the holes with the jigsaw. Now obviously, you can do the hole saw ahead of time. I know that theoretically they want you to drill and go from both directions. I'm not gonna do that. But you will get a prettier hole doing that, going from uh, from both sides. And that's gonna be fun to get out. All right, boys and girls, this thing is done so. Got our handles. Obviously, you're gonna wanna sand this outside edge of your handle as well as the inside edge of your handle as well, just so that when you grab, it doesn't kinda cut you up. Really easy to do with some sandpaper. Get the outside, get the inside as well. It's just so it feels nice. I mean, that's, that's perfect. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video of how to make a three-in-one bio box. Thank you so much for watching Break It Yourself. As always, don't forget to thumbs me up. But the most important thing you can do is share this video. The YouTube algorithm absolutely loves that. Also, we're trying to get to 50,000 subscribers this year. So go ahead and subscribe and send the video to someone who might be interested in making their own plyo box. Thanks again for watching and we will see you next time.